Joy's car that has just taken place. So I'm joined tonight by Ander. Ander, say hello to the viewers. How are we doing? And obviously myself. So what we're going to do, we're going to take you through the car step by step, give it a bit of a breakdown. And then no doubt we'll be joined by guests along the, along the way. So good evening, Imran. Very good, good timing, Imran. Good, yeah, good evening. Good evening, Andy and Carl. How are you? Yeah, how are you, yeah, Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. You? Yeah, good. So what we're going to do, Imran, we're going to go through the card step by step. So did you see the entire card? I didn't see I didn't see all of the card. I saw the um, co main and the and the main event. So, okay, you, didn't so even, you didn't you didn't even see our Nottingham boy lift his um British Union Commonwealth, yeah. No, I, I did I didn't see I, didn't, I saw I saw Adelaide's fight. Yeah, that, that he, he wasn't much better, but we'll come on to that. So yeah. I'm sure you were celebrating him around another belt coming to Nottingham. I'm sure you're happy about that. Yeah. Um, as, yeah. as well as as well as one coming next week as well. Yeah. What Kanzu, Kanzu and Lee Wood. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But but we'll do a little segment on that at the end. Cause like I said, I know you're back not in boxing, so I bet you can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Just so just come for, on, Andy. Andy just, for people, up, um, just for people that don't know, um, because you you won't be in on the joke, but um, uh, Imran's not from Nottingham, as you might have gathered. He's a he's a Leicester boy. <laughs> Yeah. And about how long that took for you to give that sentence is about how many world champions they've had. So let's move on to the card tonight. <laughs> well, we've had one world champion with Chris Pyatt. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm saying who. So let's just move on, shall we? <laughs> okay, let's start at the top of the card then. So Chris Boyd against uh, James Beach. How did you see this one, Carl? Yeah, I thought it was a good fight, and for how long it lasted, wasn't it? Um, I thought it was. I thought it was a decent. I thought it was a decent fight. I'm not sure whether um, he's going to go many more levels. though. what do you think? Well, he fluctuates, don't he? He's he's fought at two weights above that. Um, feared okay, and then obviously he's he's now ten and zero, so he's come down. He's come back down to the the uh, super bantamweight division, which he. Which is saying suits him best. He he seems to carry a little bit of power. I think James Beach was a little bit weary of what was coming back at him, and I think it perhaps made uh, I, don't, I don't know. Do you, do you pronounce it Burke or Boyk? Uh, well, I, I pronounce it Boyk. I might be okay. wrong. So so I think that maybe made Boyk look a little bit better than he is. Yeah. Technically, I think he's okay. Yeah, I don't, I, think he, I don't think he goes up too many more levels, if I'm honest. Yeah, you don't have to go looking for him, do you, Ander? No. And that's what he might struggle with. So, Dave's joined us. Dave, just give us a wave if, if you can hear us. I know we're having a few technical problems. And now that's he's been, gone. That'll be a no. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, yeah, I know BT talk their fighters up a lot and they're talking like he's the next big thing, aren't they? Oh, yeah. So, but the jaw is out for me. Yeah, me as well. So, speaking of somebody else that they talk up, uh, David Adelaide. Oh. They're, well, talking, they're talking like David Adelaide is going to be the next Mike Tyson. Stop it. But I mean, what, did, did what, you, you, you didn't hear the commentary though, did you? Uh, I, did, I did, I did, I did. The commentary, by the way, was terrible all the way. But through. Actually, I, no. To be fair, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I thought Ben Davison did a really good job with the technical side of the commentary. Uh, what's the What's the name of the other commentator that works on BT? Uh, John Rowland. John Rowland. He's so biased. Yeah, bias. Oh, it's terrible, mate. Well, so it was biased. interesting. Andy, it was interesting, wasn't it? When, I know we're going to come on to the Essendon fight, but there's talking about Nottingham's heritage in that weight division. Yeah. And they miss Lee Wood out. Yeah, I know. Well, that's because they don't fight for BT. I know, but that's what I'm saying about being biased. It took Ben Davidson to say... Took, it took oh, Ben Dav Davidson to say that, that Lee Wood's got a world title shot next week because they wouldn't have mentioned him otherwise. Yeah, so so David Adelaide uh, didn't learn nothing new. Still very slopper. Here's uh, the thing. 
Go on, sorry. Uh, and I, ju I just... Uh, is he... Uh, they, they obviously see something else in him in the gym, don't they? Clearly. Well, they must do, because you don't see it in the ring. I mean, the last fight he was in, in my opinion, oh, he lost. He got beat. He went, he went to points. They gave, him, they gave him the verdict, but he lost. And, and that was a slight step up from the level that he's just fought at. Yeah, and Greg, that, and Greg made, a, Greg made a great to... comment in the sidebar. And uh, let me just show it you. The guy didn't want to fight, did he? No. And he still looked awful. So, great point, Greg. Go on, Greg, do you, Greg, Greg, do you fancy jumping on screen? Carlo, Carlo, guys Carlo, like, guys Carlo, like Carlo that. give you the link if you do. Guys like that shouldn't even be a lot. Like, I don't know. Like, the, what was the point of that? He went in there and he smashed the guy to pieces. The guy wasn't, the guy was just in there to take a hiding, really. Imran, well, yes. this, Imran this is the problem with, with um, the way Frank Warren builds his fighters because this is what he does. Yeah. He puts them in with, he puts them in with guys that are static, yeah. that are there just to get hit to make their fighters look good. We've said this numerous times. About fighters in, in in recent in recent times, um, and De Adelaide's going to be exactly the same. He's going to fight another five or six of them fighters, knock them out, and and they're going to make him out to be some world beater. And then he'll come up to the next level against somebody that that can take a shot and throw back, and he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, he needs to rematch the guy that he fought last. Yeah, well. If he had anything about him as a fighter, he'd want to do that to prove a point, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to. He'll, he has he'll, to. Probably, he'll probably have another 10 turn up fight before jumping back in the ring with him. You know, probably. That's yeah. how like that, guy, that guy that he fought last was like, uh, he was a good be, fighter, yeah. by the way. He's a good fighter, but he wasn't, he's not, he's not, you know, a, a guy that we talk about. He's, uh, he's supposed to be there for him to beat. He's, he's a journey, journeyman, basically. But yeah, he's yeah. better. I will say that he's better than uh, he's better than a journeyman. The guy's been robbed a few times, but uh, Sol I think it's Polish guy, uh, Solas Solaski, I think. Yeah, he's been he has been got he's got some poor decisions, like he's got the the one against uh, Adelaide. He he had a few bad decisions throughout his career, which you know he's not backed by a big promoter. Uh, he hasn't got that hype around him, but he's actually quite a decent fighter. But um, he's been robbed a few times, like he did in the last fight. Oh, I just thought you know, Adelaide is almost a double R part two. Or or Anthony Yard. Or Yard. He smacks of that for me. He smacks of that for me where, where they're protecting him, they're protecting him, they're, they're bigging him up, they're blowing smoke up his arse. Um and, and he's believing his own hype. He's got some skill. The problem is he throws a shot and when it lands, he stands and admires what he's just done. Instead of carrying on with his work. And and he's gonna get He's going to get schooled if he does that against anyone half decent. And he was rushing in one air. When he, when he had the guy here, he absolutely rushed in. Now, uh, anyone who, who's a, of a decent level would, would have just would have caught him on the way in. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, how far he, he'll go. Obviously, we, he's too early to really say, but as, as of right now, um, you know, I want to see him rematch that guy that he fought last. You know, let prove a point. Sure. Like, like Andy said, if he's got something about him, he needs to avenge. Yeah. He needs to avenge that. I, I personally thought he lost that, like quite clearly. But you know, he needs to avenge that loss, even though on paper he got it. He needs to avenge that. No, he does. You're right, mate. No one's going to take him seriously unless he he fights that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you can see what Dave, what David's opinion is. They. Similar to my own, where you think he's a little bit wild. Um, I mean, we we do need to say though he's only had uh, seven fights. Yeah. Um. So he's still he's still a baby. He, he, he's had very little amateur experience. So really, he's learning on the job. So you got, I suppose, we've got to cut him a little slack. Mm -hmm. um, but in my opinion, he wasn't listening to his corner. They were telling him what he should be doing, and he was arguing back with them. Which is not a really good sign. No, it's not a good sign. I think the tools are there, but it's whether he's got the ability. Yeah, I think I think at the minute he's believing his own hype a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully that he comes away from that and, and realizes he's got a knuckle down. Less time in in the media and more time in the gym. 
Well, the crowd was full of his his, uh, his fans, wasn't it? So um, I think he was trying to show off a little bit to them at the same time. Yeah. Where instead of knuckling down and concentrating on the job ahead. So next fight, Ananda, is that, is that our man? The next fight is the British and Commonwealth welterweight uh, title fight between Chris Jenkins yeah. and... I feel a bit sorry for him, man, because he's been a while in, man, hasn't it? And, and who, who, the, who the one the and last... only, Echo <laughs> Essiman. Who was the last one out of Leicester? Was it a boxing bin, man? Yeah. Rendell Monroe. It? Yeah. Monroe. Yeah. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag been a while. So let's talk yeah. about Essiman. Did you watch this fight, um, Imran? No, no, I didn't. I, I didn't. He wouldn't have watched it because from Nottingham. He'd have turned it off. <laughs> no, I, 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 I watched the co main and the, the main one. Main one. And uh, well, well, uh, first, so, first and foremost, congratulations, um, Echo. That was absolutely amazing, mate. Great job. You did a fantastic job, champ. Get in. Yep. Cole, but, your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think it's important that we're honest about the appraisal, appraisal though. And the worst, the worst parts of the fight where it was getting caught a bit for me. It, I think it, I think he took a few too many shots. Um, but I don't I don't quite know what happened to his opponent because the tank just ran dry and didn't it? That's because that's because Echo was putting it on him, mate. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I agree with you. I gave the first. I get two out of the first three rounds to Jenkins. I think you might find that there may be an injury in there somewhere because the tank just emptied far too quick for me for Jenkins. Um, it was very strange, very strange. Um, but no, not taking nothing away from Essamon because, you know, he's got Barrington Brown as his coach who's obviously well-renowned around these parts. as yep. a very good coach. You know, he reminded me, Carl, a little bit of... Uh, the way Evan Issin went about dealing with Keller, he just Essiman just put it on him. He was quite. It's quite clear he was he was the fitter of the two fighters. Oh yeah, same age as well, you know. So and and, it, and there was a turning point. Uh, round four was a turning point for me. I, I said to you, didn't I? Because we 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 were uh, what's up in what's up in, in between in between the rounds, and I was saying to you, he's getting on top here, and there was no looking back from that point. But the first, the first, uh, the second and the third round for me, he was struggling to take centre of the ring. Mm. Um, but from that point on, he took total control. Um, it, it's interesting. It was, clearly, it was clearly the better box out of the two, wasn't it? Absolutely, yeah, mate. Yeah. And it's it's interesting to see who he's called out. Did you see that? No, who did he call out? Conor Ben. Really? So. So Conor Ben was meant to be fighting Jenkins for this title, and then decided to go elsewhere. Um, so he never got Ben's never never won these the British and Commonwealth. So Essiman's I think basically saying, well, yeah, his chance. I can't see Conor Conor Ben taking the taking the shot though. He's he's got other plans, hasn't he? Right. He should be looking to win all the belts, right? Yeah, especially yeah, the, yeah. the prestigious British one. Everyone wants a British one, don't they, in the career? The British Lonsdale belt, for me, is the, the, the sexiest belt on the planet. It's fantastic. I understand Conor Ben was... He's had it real tough for me. I like Conor Ben a lot. He's had it real tough. He's, he's had to carry the weight of that name um, and try and forge a career. And the way his last fight went... It's an argument to say that he's past British level. I mean, we said did we, we're after one of Ben's earlier performances, you lot kind of went in on me a little bit. You, Ray, and Dave all went in and said, "There's no way, there's no way Ben's going to win a world title uh, at welterweight." And I said, "He'll win a world title within two years." And I, I would stand by that. No, nah. because he's aggressive. Who's he going to beat? The world titles will be split by that point, mate. They'll 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 be fractured. Eventually, a, a vacant title will come will come up. He, he will win a world title in two years. It depends who he fights because right now, if there's someone like Ennis or or um, 
compared to those guys, I don't see him beating those guys. He's got, he's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of learning to do. Don't get me wrong. Um, but anyway, let's. We, we've gone on a bit of a tangent, haven't we? Yeah, we're, yeah, talk, yeah. We're, we're talking about. We're talking about belts coming back to Nottingham here. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to see Essamin jump in with Conor Ben yet. I'd rather him um, have some more fights because he's been nowhere near that level, has he? No, you're right. He needs he, he needs he needs the next in line in the British the British rankings, and that needs to be uh, Frank Warren. Whether you watch this show or you don't watch this show, that needs to be at the Nottingham Arena. Bring the lad home. Let him let him fight in front of his own crowd. He deserves that for what he's just done. I'd agree. Would you mind him fighting that, uh, Southpaw, that match room, match room's got? Say that again, mate. The Southpaw that match room's got. What's it, the Mickinson? That'd be a good fight. I like Mickinson, though. Tough cook, yeah. He's a good um, fighter, Mickinson. He is a good fighter. And Conor Ben don't want that, want that fight. Here's the thing, right? Echo's underrated because he hasn't had the profile. So people are seeing him maybe for the first time tonight mm. and wondering yeah. what he's about, what, you know, is... There's flaws here, though, Andy, weren't there? You know, if you're a fighter looking at him, you're definitely... There's definitely holes in his game, isn't there? We're not saying he's anywhere near the, the polished no, art. No, 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 no. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's perfect, but everyone learns, mate. Yeah, you know? I'm just saying... There should be no reason why why people are avoiding him. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 and and, and probably because of his style and uh, the way he goes about his business. Maybe that'd be why he's not been with one of the big promoters earlier on. But they've got to pay attention now because he holds two two uh, important belts. Frank Warren will be jumping all over him, won't he? So You're right. Like to Rather than calling out Conor Ben, don't you think he should have called out Mickinson? It would have been a more realistic option, more realistic fight. I think, I think, yeah, well, maybe so. But he's, he's obviously looking at the name as well, isn't he? Because every yeah. fighter well, wants to. Yeah, wants let's to build... be honest. He's come from nowhere, and he's had no profile. He's had his chance. He's on. He's on a large platform with BT. So why wouldn't you just throw that name out there with a the, with a the view that the chances of me getting that Conor Ben are very, very remote. But it's going to get me some air time and some sound yeah. bites, isn't it? Good publicity, yeah. See, it's all about the commercial the co co commercial viability again, you see. Should have called, called, called them both out, though. Because like, obviously, Mickinson would be... Like, Conor Ben's not going to fight him, but Mickinson, there's more of a chance Mickinson might come to the table. Yeah, what he you should might... have said... He should, he, should have, he should have just said he wants someone in, who's, who's highly ranked in the, in the division. Yeah. The, thing, the, the, the thing is, what you've got to think about, though, guys, is in a few days' time, he might think like that. But he's come straight out of the ring after winning the British and Commonwealth title. He's buzzing. Yeah, yeah. And, and he gets a camera and a microphone shoved in his face and he's asked, who do you want next? And the it's obvious, really, obvious answer is Ben, isn't it? It's really Warren who should be keeping, who should have a lid on things, who should be plotting where next. Really, it should be Warren. It, well, it will be, won't it? Um, Warren will be lecking the fight, so it'll be Warren that will probably have that decision. It, it's, it, well, it's not going to be, it's not going to be Ben, is it? Let, let's have it right. It'll no. be, it'll be a British, it'll be a British level fighter, and then we'll see, we'll see where he's at. But for, for right now, congratulations, mate. Well yeah, no, another belt on its way to the best fight the, town in these the Midlands. fighting pride of Nottingham. A East Midlands, you may as well throw fighting pride of, pride of East Midlands, aren't we? <laughs> In round, we're coming to Leicester September the 11th for a Carl Greaves show. What 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 show's that? Carl Greaves has got his first show back. At, is it is it the Morning Side Arena? Morning, morning Side Arena. What is that? Where's that? I've never heard. I've never heard. It's about, it's about, Are you sure it's about you're from there? It's about yeah, you from Leicester, seater. born and bred. There's no morning side what? Yeah, it's oh, about a 3,000-seater oh. arena, Imran. All right. Otherwise known as a Leicester arena as well from time to time, I believe. Possibly. Maybe they change a lot of names. They change They change a lot of names. We've got a lot of arenas here. And anyway, so if you don't know Imran, we've we've had Cole Greaves on the show. He's, yeah, a, yeah. he's, he's a trainer and ex-professional yeah. He did very well for himself. He was a great fighter. Uh, yeah. I, had, I, had, I had a kind of 
I kind of, I had a, they didn't have a spat on me on Twitter, uh, but basically uh, I kind of like had a back and forth with him on, on Twitter. I'm sure, well, if that's the case, then he was right. I'll just tell you that right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's only one winner there, everyone. <laughs> and, he, and they don't reside in Leicester. <laughs> Uh, he's he's a fantastic bloke, mate. We've had him on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is, and it's his, um, it's his first show. He he does these small old shows. It's his first show as a promoter, stroke trainer, uh, after the lockdown situation. Um, so it's it's a bit it's a big deal for him. Um, and and us at us at Last Bell are going to go um, and show our support. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let me so know. It, let me... It's it's the it's the eleventh of September. Right. Uh, tickets go on sale, and I believe in seven days. Right. Okay. Um, so they'll sell like hotcakes. Uh, he always sells his shows out. So, well, anyway, if you come and sit with us, um, we'll get a face to face with Carl. We can finish that argument off. With who? Carl. Carl with Reeves. Carl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With about, who? David, about, about about David Avanessian. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I appreciate your opinion. He'll give. He'll give you a photo. <laughs> so next fight in Anders. That's Essamon done. Congratulations. Uh, Sam Noakes. Yeah. Against um, Naeem Mali. Yeah, I think the the next two fights were a little bit average on the card. I said that to you on WhatsApp. I think they should have put Essamon up as a chief support. Well. Noakes is the big is the big show, isn't it? He's the he's the guy they pin all the hopes on. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, mate, although it was a very one sided affair, I think he looks great. Yeah, there's a little asterisk there again, though, isn't there? You know, until well, he until he jumps in with an active opponent. Well, they will they will be waiting there because he's he's he's, he's only just learning his trade. But yeah, he has he all he has, he, he has he all good. the shots, mate. He has all the shots. He does, he does. You can just tell sometimes that fighters are, are levels levels and levels above. Let's yeah. just let's just say this one thing though. Um, Naeem Ali had about seventy fights and never been stopped. Never been stopped until tonight. So that tells you the quality, really. His but, nose was uh, gone, wasn't it? That up yeah. put done, didn't it? Absolute quality, mate. Absolute quality. Yeah. There's a lot to be lot to be said for these for these journeymen, isn't there? Everyone everyone laughs at them. Oh yeah, you've had seventy five, and you lost 70, 76 of them. Chief as nails, <laughs> aren't they? But but they, they are nails. They rock hard. They're in there to not just to make other fighters look good, but they're in there to to be durable and. And last rounds and give these fighters a bit of yeah um, a bit of time in the ring, and uh, and hopefully not get caught. Yeah, hopefully not get caught because I mean he's had a stupid amount of fights this year. Yeah. It, it, since since two thousand nineteen, he's had like twenty fights. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd do that during lockdown, <laughs> <laughs> but he has. Yeah, Cr crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, it, but but gamers, gamers, you like me, it, you know, yeah. He was tough to break down, but that's what I mean by how how good I think he is. He's had five fights this year. Exactly, exactly, and and, and he's he's really durable. So I think I think uh, I think Sam Noakes is going a long way. So uh, the next fight, uh, Imran. Mm. Um. Is I can't even read my own writing. Oh, Hamza. Mm. What do you what, what do you think of him as a fighter? To be honest, I've seen him. I've seen. I've obviously seen him today, and obviously there's been a lot of hype around him. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of hype around Hamza. Um, he, he, to to be honest, to be fair, today I was impressed. I thought he looked great. Uh, I wasn't so much of a fan prior. Like he looked a bit stiff to me and a bit slow, but today he looked really good. Like he. So, so let, let me just quote BT for you. Uh, they oh. think he's the next Tommy Ernst. Oh, that, oh, that, 
like that's what I mean. Like the commentary stuff like that is is non. Like I don't really like. I don't. I, I don't really like to get carried away with myself. Like carried away with, with the certain things that they say on 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 commentary. You know they were. You know even. Hey, oh. I've got someone. Put fifty p in the meter in run. Uh, so, do you want to give us your review, Andy? Yeah, no, I, he, he is good. He is good. He picks his shots. Uh, I think they're going a little bit over the top at the minute with him, though. He's, he's, he's nowhere near the level that they think he is. Uh, I think he does have a good shot selection. He picks his shots well. He takes his time. Um, and, and look pretty good. Hello? 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 We can hear you now, little penner. Oh right, sorry. Um, because it's just that I'm not on your screen. That's all. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why that is. Well, because your camera's not on. I don't know. But, but we it, can says, it's, it says you're in the show though, so but I'm yeah, not we, on your double screen. We yeah, we can hear you loud and clear though, little pain. We're not we're obviously you're not on camera anyway, fella. So we've got your audio, okay? Wait, where's Imran? He's yeah, just dropped we, off for some reason. Yeah, we just lost connection, so uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay. Did you watch the show tonight, little fella? What show? The Joe Joyce one. Oh no, I haven't because um, it's it's I, I just woke up. Who <laughs> won? Oh, I know there's a bit of a time difference. So we're just going to finish off talking about the card, and then we'll move on to more mainstream topics. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I'm I'm not familiar with the gentleman uh, who you're who's next to you. Yeah, so that's Andy. He's a co-presenter on Last Bell Boxing. So, Andy, this is Little Penny from uh, New Zealand. Yes. Yeah, good memory I've got there. Nice so, to meet you. Hi, Andy. Nice how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, fella. Nice to meet you. You all right? Yes, I am. Just woke up, actually. I I'm actually um, doing work as well, so I thought I'd, I'd log in with you guys before I start working. Oh, what, nice. time, what time is it over there, then? At nine o'clock. Well, you're a bit lazy to get up at nine o'clock, aren't you? But anyway, it's another day. <laughs> well, it is the weekend, so. Oh, that's all right then. So we'll just carry on with this then, little Penny, okay? And then we'll come to you about the mainstream aspects, okay? Sure. Cheers, fella. Go just on, out of, Just out of interest, uh, little Penny, you, do you know? Do you know what, what? What's your opinion on um, Joe Joyce as a fighter? Yeah, I think he's good. I think he's very good. Um, He's probably the ne one of the next generation to come up. Hey, there's Imran. Oh, he's gone again. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There, there we, we go. go. What happened there, mate? Connection, the connection. No, no, sorry, guys, one sec. Sorry, little, oh, little Penny, carry on. Yeah, I'm always on Imran's um, channel. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, well, not always, but um, I always I always uh, watch his videos because they're very um, in they're very intriguing. Look, look, we haven't got you on here. Stop plugging in on the Facebook page, okay? So just, <laughs> just calm yourself down. How much does this cost, Imran? Imran, have you planted little penny on here tonight or what? No, I didn't even know he was coming. Ah, Rick, yeah, yeah, I've been too <laughs> suspicious going off here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he didn't. I didn't. I he didn't know. I just came on. Yeah, but uh, just going back to George Joyce, I do like George Joyce. I thought um, he might be like the next George Joyce, and um, uh, uh, he might be like you know the next generation coming up after you know after AJ and uh, Tyson Fury. Ages against him a little bit though, isn't it? Yeah. And and, and I know we're going to cover the fight, but he didn't look particularly great tonight either. What about what about if you put him in? Because we're talking about him moving up up against uh, fringe world level fighters, and and an ideal fringe world level fight for him would be um, Joseph Parker. Oh, I like that fight. Mm. Who do you think? Who do you think wins that? Interesting. I don't know. That's a good fight. I like that. That's a fifty fifty fight, fight for me. And Joseph pa Joseph Parker didn't look good in his last fight either, so. It's even more intriguing. See, we've we've talked about um, Joe Joyce over the last couple of weeks on our show, and me and Carl have different opinions. Carl thinks that he's he's world level and 
and he's he's right up there and even better. I think I think I'm not missing this comment. Uh, yeah, just comment in your for what you quote here, and uh, let, 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 I'm all okay, there. Okay, I'll, I'll say it, and then you tell me if I'm wrong. So you You're said you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you said that he was better than Dillian White. Correct. On tonight's performance, do you still think that? Well, I'm not going. I'm not going to change my mind on one performance. Um, but that performance tonight doesn't beat Dylan White. But I still that, think he's. But I still think he's better than Dylan White. That he performance. Can, you can't have that argument, though, can't you? Because everyone has a bad night. Yeah, yeah, everyone has a bad night. But everything that happened tonight are the reasons why I don't think he's is is at that level. Yeah, he I think slow, he was cumbersome. He was static. He didn't have any head movement. He was too easy to hit. Against anyone of any size that had an engine, he would have lost tonight. Yeah. I don't think that performance tonight would have beat Daniel Dubois. No, awful, wants it. So, is he even took his eye I did say it into that. I'm worried that he didn't look switched on when he came into the ring. Because I think it's the first time in his pro career that he's got that he can see that finishing line in terms of who's he can judge to a counter. And that would have lumped pressure on him before that fight. I know he's got to be able to handle it. Let's <laughs> let's talk about that that Ed attire. Yeah, um, what was all what that about? What was all that about? You reckon that it's worse. something out of the go on in, man. That was worse than Wilder's costume, wasn't it? <laughs> wow. So it, it 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 didn't it say Andy it's, it's a juggernaut out of um, X Men. Oh, something like that, mate. But it looked like it looked like my my daughter had made it in school. To be quite honest, yeah, it was awful. Okay. It was, and, and you know what was even worse was the camera following him out of the dressing room, and just before he was about to come round the curtain, you got um, Sam Jones put like trying to put it on his head, trying to figure out which way round it was. BT BT as a show, mate, is. I did make the comment that he was engaging with the crowd too much, didn't I? And, I, and I'll say again, that he just didn't look switched on when he came into the ring. He seemed preoccupied. But, but do you know, but, so so why did he not mention that? Why did he think that it was a great performance? Why did Frank Warren think it was a great performance? I mean, you've only got to listen to Josh Taylor in, in commentary. Yeah. Did, you, did you hear what he said? Yeah. I'm Ben Davison. And Ben Davison on on commentary. Josh Josh Taylor said it, and, and Josh Taylor's got no, he's got no bones. He, he, anyone that knows what Josh Taylor's about, he says it how it is. He's not scared who he says it to. He's not scared who he says it about. And he basically, did you see that in run? He turned around and he said, he was way too static. If he'd have been in there against Anthony Joshua, he'd be in really big trouble. Yeah, to be honest, to be honest, um. I, I think Joyce looks like that all the Joyce, by the way, looks terrible. Every time I see him fight, he doesn't impress me at all. But I think he's one of those fighters that I said I, I think he he's more effective than he looks. He'll never look yeah. into the eye. And he'll never look great. Um but But you, you can't you, you can't be very effective in Ram when you're getting hit clean yeah. yes. by That's, by heavyweight yeah. and a heavyweight fighter. I mean, yeah. that first round, he got it with six or seven yes. over and right. Yeah. He's and got some chin, Joshua. though, hasn't he? And, yeah, but the thing is, that good chin against Joshua won't be... Uh, I don't think. I don't believe if Joshua lands those combination punches that he does, he's not going to be able to take too many of them flush like that. And if he, yeah. even if he does, two, after two, three rounds, he's going to... Like, you're going to get taken out. Joshua's really big. He's not 6'1". Yeah. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's what, eight and a half stone. He, see, Takam was, Takam was throwing... One of those shots and then coming back out, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Joshua yeah. was going to be throwing four or five at, at once. And Andy, he's too slow. When he throws his punches, like Takam was getting out of the way. Now, Joshua's not got fast feet. Joshua's slow. But Joshua's fast enough to get out of the way of Joyce's punches. It's so telegraphed and so slow. You, yeah, you're saying, you're saying pretty much what I said a couple of weeks ago, Imran. Um, he does telegraph his shots. And I mean, Carl kind of called me out and said I was a Joyce hater. And I know that it was half of, half of the time he was doing that to wind me up, uh, and it worked because I got we got pretty into it a little bit, didn't we? On the show, I don't, I don't know what you're on about. I don't wind no one up, me. <laughs> um, but he's very he is very effective 
in the in the sense that he's got a very good jab, which he didn't use very well tonight. He was, no. he, was he was in the pocket too much. He won't keep in Takam at distance, and he should have been able to do that really easily. Yeah, the only point I make, Gander, the only point I make is that I think Joe Joyce gets penalised because of his boxing style, which I think is very effective, but it's awful to watch. It is That's awful to watch. I make. It is effective, but it wasn't effective tonight, mate, because... He didn't stick behind uh, his jab, though, did he? And he wasn't uh, listening yeah, but, to his but that's, because a, that's because a little man, a little man, for in... in An old uh, man, as well. In the heavyweight division of today, a little man got inside and landed too many big shots in the first couple of rounds. He it, it would, it, it would have learned a lot from that fight, though. He's going to have to, because, because his next fight's Joshua. And he's going to get absolutely schooled if he, if is, he acts like that. Is it 13 in pro fights, Dad? Uh, yes. 15, maybe. Some, I, think like he's I think he's 13. Yeah, but he had... Let, so let's, let, let, yeah, but hold on. Though. Yeah, but let's remember, he had a very distinguished amateur career, mate. But that's nothing like the pro game, is it? I know it's not, but the amount of amateur fights he had gives him a very good standing when he comes into the to the pro game. Good. If you, was, if, you was to say to me, if, if you was to say to me that he'd had 15 pro fights and no amateur career, then your point would be valid. 13 because he's learning fights. Or whatever it is. But he's, he's learning, he would be, he'd be learning on the job. He's learned so much in that amateur career. Yeah, it's a slightly different game, he's, but he's learned so much in that amateur career that he comes, he comes into the pro game running. I still, think, the no, I, I, crawling. Think, I still think, though, as you go in, up, up the echelons of heavyweight box, well, any any pro boxing, yeah. you've still got to learn a little bit on the job when you get to that level, especially after 13 fights. I don't care what you say about the amateur game. Yes, that will learn you to a certain degree, but not when you come in with the with the higher ranking boxers. Not okay. for me. I'll, I'll, okay, oh, fair enough. I'll give you that. So he's had 13 fights at British level. And done everything he's needed to do at that level. Beat the up and coming star in Dubois comfortably. Beat everyone else he's been in with comfortably. Um, and then he steps up to I would call an inter intermediate level. A guy that a guy that's only been stopped by three other fighters. Um. Very durable. But there's something I want to throw in here. Because of the success that Takam had in the first couple of rounds, he went all out in them first four, four, four rounds because he thought he could stop Joyce because of the success he was having. And he blew himself out. He didn't fight that way against Joshua. and he didn't. I'm not that sure that's the case. So I think he just thought... I just don't think, I think he had no confidence in his stamina. So I think he was always going to go for a blowout in them first few rounds, no matter what. Well, he's lasted all the other fights. He's only been stopped by three guys. So his stamina yeah, can't be that bad. It's 40 now, though, isn't it? So he don't, that, that tank's only going to empty quicker. Yeah. I, know they say he was in, I know they're saying he was in great nick, but that don't always help his stamina, does it? I think he definitely went in. His game plan was they either take him out earlier or I'm in trouble. Because you're never going to have a better stamina than Joyce, is it? No. Well, I don't think anybody in 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 no, heavyweight boxing's got a better got a better engine than Joyce. So I don't think it was anything to do with him having a little bit of success, which, which he did have. I think that was always going to be the game plan. Yeah. Joe's Joe's very very lucky that he's got a good chin. Mm. He's very yeah, lucky he's got he a good is. chin, and he's and he's very lucky he has the engine he has, because if he didn't have the chin and he didn't have the engine, he would have got stopped convincingly tonight. Yeah. yeah, and I would suggest that um, he talks about watching it back in the hotel room. He might be up quite late tonight because there's a hell of a lot for him to be looking at in that fight. Well, Sam Jones is quite quite an outspoken uh, individual and I would bet that Sam Jones behind closed doors, he won't say it out in public. He'll say that it was a decent win and, and he's proved himself now that at this level. That's what he'll say in public. Behind closed doors, he's got to be saying something to Joyce about that performance tonight. He's, he's got to be saying you can't carry on like that. His trainer couldn't come over, could he, because of the COVID? No, it's um, it's the guy that used to be um, a yeah. maker's trainer. I can't uh, remember his name. Oh, yeah. The two, the, I know. Who's that guy? 
because he clearly had no respect for that bow, Steve Stephen Bow. Yeah, but, but he was his he was his trainer for the for the Dubois fight, and he was all right in that. He was almost arguing though, weren't there, at one point where he just didn't agree with what he was saying. That no, guy, I, I don't think he was in the corner for Dubois though, was he? He got COVID, didn't he? Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't in the corner. Yeah. So, I I just, I mean, for me. There's been absolutely nothing in this fight to tell me any different to what I've already said about Joyce over the last two weeks. He's still he's still going to prove himself because, for me, all he's done is prove my point tonight. Yeah, well, he stopped the guy. Was it? He, he, he stopped the guy because he was tired. Yeah, I, I don't think he beat uh, on that. Uh, not even on that performance. I think what we need from Joyce now is we need jo for Joyce to step up against a Ruiz, a Parker, somebody like that, so then we can see how good he is. Because if you keep putting it like Saka and the guys like that, he's never going to look great. He's never going to look special. He's never going to look a fighter that we think, oh, this guy's great. He's a world beater. So we really need him to now step up with somebody that's actually a world title defender, like, yeah. Ruiz, like a Parker. Um, or even if, if, for example, if Usyk was to lose, even that would be a good fight, you know. The thing, the thing is, though, mate, you know, because now he's number one contender for that WBO title, he won't. He, won't. He, he won't fight anybody else. No, he won't. But that he'll, he'll wait for the Joshua fight. Yeah, that. that... He almost said that in the post fight, did that? Yeah. Yeah. I Abel Sanchez is his coach. Abel's that's it. You've got to think about his age as well. He's what thirty-seven. 35. 35? Yeah, something like that. So he's not he's not a young fighter. Um and he's wanting to get these title shots sooner rather than later. He's not gonna he's not gonna gamble fighting no. a world a world title contender, a world level fighter if he doesn't have to. Mm. He's he's a, he's quite a smart cookie, he's got smart management. He, they're not gonna gamble with him if if they know that they, they can hang around for eight months. 10 months and wait for that world title shot then that's what they're going to do I'm not sure he'll I'm not sure he'll get that title shot he might be waiting around for a long time yeah because it, especially if you have the unified title fight maybe maybe but you might be in a it might be in a position where where that I've said it I've said it already I don't I don't I don't know if that you need that uh, undisputed title fight happens because mm. I can see the belts getting split up. I can see Joshua getting getting stripped if he don't fight. His, well, it it, his it made me smile when Frank Warren went on 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 a little bit of a rant into saying, "Well, he's mandatory now. He's mandatory now." Well, tell Dillian White that it didn't mean it didn't make him get a title fight. No. So don't count your chickens. No, but then again, we we spoke about this on on Thursday show on Thursday's live show, didn't we? Um, is that because? Eddie Earn didn't push for Dillian White the way he should. Frank Warren's going to make sure that happens, mate. Into if he can, he'll make sure it happens. He'll do everything he can. What about Joyce v Chisora? Well, it that's, was there tonight, wasn't it? it was there. That's, that's a good shout, you know, because Chisora's durable, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you know, Chisora's going all night long. He, he, yeah. He's got a great chin himself. He'll take loads of shots. And what he'll do is he'll he'll come forward and he'll sit on Joyce's chest, and we'll we'll, we'll see then what sort of an. But he's is. got no tank, has he? He empties the tank as he well. Does. Oh, yeah, yeah, but he lasts. He lasts though, Carl. He lasts twelve rounds. He lasts twelve rounds. It every single fight he'll go twelve. But rounds. He, was, he, he was knackered though, wasn't he? In the Parker of fight. No, of course, of course he was. He's an old man himself. Yeah. And Parker yeah. should have got him out of there, really. When he's on the, when he's on the road, you know, he's asking to be took out. You're talking. You're talking about somebody that's that's been in war after war after war after war. Eventually, that's got to take its toll. He's been he's been not he's been not not knocked out clean by. I don't think Warren will pay enough money. I don't think Warren will pay enough money to get Delboy in the ring. Delboy might see it as an opportunity on that performance. If he's there, been there tonight, he'll see how static he is. He'll see how easy he is to it. Because you can't argue that fact, Cole. The yeah. guy's got no head movement at all. No, no. He relies way too heavily on on his chin. He's got. He, he must have a very good chin for taking the shots he took tonight. But in this heavyweight division, you cannot rely on that chin. You're gonna. I don't think he's like Del Boy. I don't. 
You won't have another fight before the world title fight. I don't. I know. I don't think he does. I agree. I don't think he has enough power as well. To be honest with you, I'm not sure he's a part. He doesn't have a power. Is he? Uh, he doesn't. I tell you what, he does, mate. He, he doesn't load up on his shots when he's throwing combinations. He, he's not throwing him with spike. No. You could easily get out of the way. You know, um, a faster fighter or a younger fighter would easily get out of the way of those shots as well. Atakan yeah. made a miss early on in the first couple of rounds. He did, yeah. Atakan was making a miss all the time and landing them bombs. Yeah, uh, I've there's been nothing nothing from him tonight that makes me think any differently to what I thought before. He, for me, I'll say exactly what I said two weeks ago. He needs to prove himself. It's definitely a bad night at the office tonight, let's put it that way. It was. It wasn't a great performance. Have we still got Lil Penny on? Yep. Yes. It, was it was is this something specific you wanted to, to talk to us tonight about? No, no, really. I just wanted to join in and listen to you guys. Where did you give me a little penny? Where where did Joe Parker go next? I don't know. I don't know. Um he didn't look too good in this last fight. Um You won though. Yeah, so, he did. maybe a re maybe a rematch with with AJ because that was a pretty good fight. No, no, it's awful. No, no, no. the referee scored okay. that fight, and anyway, he's lost so many. He's lost so many fights. Nobody wants to see that. Do you know who I'd throw him in with a Philip Ergovich, someone like that. A good fight, tough fight. Because um, yeah, because the belts are all tied up, aren't they? Really. I think Parker needs to reinvent himself. Well, I think he is doing it uh, to some degree. Parker, well, he's he's, in, that's a he's in a great place if he uh, if he reinvents himself because he's with Cronk Cron Jim per se with Andy Lee. Yeah, Andy Lee's a great trainer. He will, yeah, will he, he, yeah. very good. He is. Andy Lee's spot on. Maybe Andy Lee didn't have enough time with him um, for, the, for the last fight because because he didn't. To me, it didn't look like it, it improved any any at all. I don't think it, it improved at all. It only been with him a matter of a week, so I don't know. Yeah. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what he does differently going forward because it has to improve. Um, even Andy Lee said he lost that last fight. And if your coach is saying you lost the fight... He didn't lose fight. that last fight. He didn't lose. I don't care how many times he tried, he tried to grasp onto this, he lost the fight. He didn't lose the fight. Why is, why is Andy Lee saying he lost the fight then? Well, wait, show me a video. The post fight video. Andy Lee says. Show it me then. Andy Lee says, I thought he lost the fight. Nah. I can't show you. I've not, I've not got it in front of me. Go so back. It's a close fight. It was a close fight. If anyone Andy that. Lee's actual words were, I, I don't think he, he lost said he lost. Fight. No. <laughs> no. You've had too many of them. That, what, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking Jack Daniels. <laughs> Tennessee yeah, well, what are you doing? You're rewriting history. That's what you're doing. Other, other cinnamon bourbons may be available, but I'm drinking Jack Daniels. Yeah, well, I think you're rewriting history as well. I'm that's not rewriting history. That's exactly yes, what we said. Are. Show you me the video. Like I can't even got it in front of me, have I? I will, I'll find it. Well, then. Cedric, how are you doing? Good evening, gentlemen. How are Cedric, you? Cedric, can you yeah. bring some sense to this show, please? <laughs> so, um, did... I know you're struggling to get it live, weren't you, Cedric? So I'll be at the start of it now, or not? I actually, I just got lucky because I my stream just just came on uh, just for the main event. Yeah, um, don't, so don't mention the name of the stream for God's sake. I'm, um, I'm, sure, it's, I'm sure it's all legit. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The, the legal stream. I, I, I meant to give say. Give us, give us your take on on um, Joyce's performance, yeah. Cedric. I um. <sighs> As I expected, we all knew we all knew Joe Joyce would uh, would throw lots of jabs. I just I just wish he would. I thought he'd be able to stop him earlier if he if he sat down on his punches a little bit more. He was a little bit busier. Contrary to the to the commentators, I thought uh, I thought Joe Joyce. I gave Joe Joyce the first two rounds and to come the the third. Um, the way that the com was throwing a little bit more in the third, he was trying to do that in the first and the second. But mm -hmm. Joe Joyce was just—I thought Joe Joyce was a little, just a little bit more more effective with keeping him off and with with more jabs. Um, do you not then, think? Do you not think Joe Joyce was a little bit too easy to it? 
a little bit too well, there, well there's a loaded question if i've ever heard one <laughs> Well, no, no, it's not a loaded question because he could say no. I don't think he was. So well, shut up and let leave him answer the question. Leave the garden buff. Cedric, you <laughs> give it your opinion, not one that Andy wants you to give. <laughs> um, I, I felt if I felt Joyce could have, when he did at the beginning of that round when he hurt to come, I felt he could have done that earlier if he would have like sit down, use his legs more to sit down on his punches earlier in the fight. Um, I was just trying to in between rounds. In, it's funny because in between rounds, that round when he stopped him, was it the fifth or the sixth round? Uh, ooh, it, Pardon me, it was one, the sixth. going into the sixth. I was trying to, I was trying to go on Twitter real quick and just say if George Joyce is a little bit more busier, but if he would sit down on his punches more, he would do more damage. And then ten seconds later, and that's when he hurt him. So yeah, that's that's uh, that was that was that was my take on that. Um, <clears throat> Not sure if he's ready, not ready for 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 the for the top guys yet. As I said before, he doesn't have much time. He's thirty five years old right now. I think you know he's you know a couple more years good left to him. So he's gonna have to. See, has no choice but to step up, stay at that top level right now, and um, hope he again just sitting down on his punches more would would help him. I believe. You didn't get to see much of the undercard then. No, no, no. I apologize. I gotta go back and watch. So just for um. Just for going for going back, and just for the sake that we've got him run on the shows from Leicester, uh, uh, Nottingham have got a new um, British and Commonwealth champion. Congratulations! Congratulations! Sorry, Imran. Just in case you didn't know that, Nottingham have got a new British and Commonwealth champion. Great. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We're sure where we're going to put all these belts in the UK. <laughs> Mate, you know that joke about maybe we borrow. You know how you borrowed Lennox Lou? Maybe we'll start borrowing belts. <laughs> uh, yes, you guys are doing very well right now, man. Congrats to you guys. Congrats. It's a golden <laughs> era in the UK at the minute, Cedric. It's a bit of a golden era, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, you know, you guys work hard. You deserve it too. So we'll see. We'll see how long uh, that rain stays. <laughs> so. Regarding Joshua and Usyk, then Cedric, um, now it's all been officially announced and it's all it's, it's going to happen. Who's your t who wins that, Cedric? Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Usyk by split oh. decision. <laughs> oh wow! Great shot, mate. I am. I am. I am. That's why. So, so Cedric, let's, say, let's that, say your breakdown, Cedric. Yeah, why, why you think that that's going to be the case? And I'll try not to laugh, Cedric. <laughs> um, I know uh, people think I'm crazy when I when I compare yeah. Usyk to, to Evander Holyfield. Yeah, I understand. I, I understand he's not there yet, but the, they have a similar path. They both won gold medals at the Olympics. They both cleaned out the cruiser rate division as professionals and and are now stepping it up to, to the to the heavyweight division. My a serious concern is um Usyk in his in his uh in his in his first outing at the heavyweight division he fought I don't even know the guy's name never heard of him before the guy took the fight on like a couple weeks notice and Usyk really really struggled with him. Um so definitely is a concern there. I'm just trusting. I'm just trusting his his uh, his boxing IQ again. If if if, if Evander Holyfield didn't didn't have the didn't set the path to show that you can do it, I probably would not have to have as much confidence. Um, so I'm just I'm just going it based off that. I I know it sounds crazy. So you think um, he um you think he stays out the way of Joshua for twelve rounds and then and wins on on his <clears throat> odds boxing ability. I, he he has the footwork too. I mean, even even uh, in his other fights, he doesn't have one punch knockout power. He he boxes guys. He uses his footwork to yep. move around. Yep. So it's not like you know, it's not like he stands there and, and bangs bangs with with uh, with with his opponents. He he uses his footwork to to move around to to stay away from it. Um. So so yes, that's my. I can uh, see I can see much. though, Cedric. You're doubting yourself as you as you're talking. <laughs> you know, you know what, you know what, Cedric. We've had this conversation more than once on the show, and 
on both occasions, everyone else has laughed at me because I've said that Usyk's got a chance. Um, everyone else thinks Joshua wins easily. He wins comfortably. He stops, he stops Usyk because he's too big. Uh, the, the, they're, the underestimating, they're underestimating Usyk's boxing ability. It's, it's underestimating uh, underestimating the skills. Um, you know, at some point, uh, the heavier person, <clears throat> the heavier person, even though the heavier person might not be as skilled as the as the lighter person, the weight. There's a reason why there's weight classes. Yep. Just going to a quick, really quickly about Lomachenko and Lopez. I really think that was the main difference in Lomachenko losing. I really. Much respect to Lopez and his good boxing skills, but I think it was more of Lomachenko being more not scared but more leery of of Lopez's being bigger and more being more careful of his of his power in those earlier rounds that made him hesitate so much. Um, that that would be the only way I would see Joshua winning that fight. I don't see Joshua just landing a one punch KO on. Because again, Usyk is not one to stand or and trade with you. Um, so, Josh, I mean, I've I've also said on the show that Joshua tends to struggle with smaller people. I never thought about that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's 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 had it difficult. He struggled with Takam when other people have dealt with Takam. Even Joe Joyce tonight, and on a very poor Joe Joyce performance, in my opinion, he dealt with dealt with Takam. Uh, and 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 by the way, Takam took the Joshua fight on a few weeks' notice. There you go. And even you know, with Joshua with his with his big knockouts that he's had in his career, from the the Klitschko knockout to Dylan White to whoever, it, those knockouts more come when the person is trading with him. Yeah. And he just catches him within within that combination. So again, I don't I don't see Usyk. Standing there and trading with him for, for Joshua. That's, Cedric, that's what, what about what about if um, Usyk can't keep Joshua off off him? So what about if his power doesn't keep AJ off him? If he can't, if he can't keep him off him, um, then then he's in for a long. Well, he's not in for a long night. He's in for a painful night. A, a painful night. A painful night. Um, Again, I'm I'm just going off of Usyk's full work. I think he'll be able to move for 12 rounds. I think that like the way that the way that Joshua fought Ruiz in the second fight, when Joshua wanted no parts of standing there trading yeah. with him because he didn't want to get caught, and he just stayed on his feet and moved around and jabbed, and moved for 12 rounds. That's what I believe Usyk is going to try to do with uh, with with, uh, with Joshua. So if if I was in Joshua's camp, I'd I'd try to work on footwork to cut off for, uh, as far as cutting off the ring the sparring partners wouldn't be as much as what punches that we're working on but more more so of cutting off the ring because Usyk is good I'm just, I'm just expecting him to be using his footwork to move around the ring the whole fight so if I was Joshua I, I'd try to work on cutting off the ring do you think sparring. Joshua is mobile enough to do that well I mean you know in his training videos he's doing all types of acrobatic stuff so I mean but you got to put that stuff to uh, you got to transfer all those things in into the ring. Let's see that. Um, now I never thought I'd utter this sentence, but Imran, let's bring you in for some sense. Talk to us about how AJ goes against Usyk. I, 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 Imran, I, sorry, Imran. Nice to very meet you. I've never formally been in. Oh, you haven't, have you? Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. But yeah. Um, in terms of the Usyk fight, I think I kind of, I agree with Cedric. Oh I, my dude, start doing a U turn. No, 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 you, know, you know my you know my opinion. You know my opinion from day day dot. <laughs> like, I, I said that they just, they're they're basically echoing what I've been saying for a while now. Have I been watching a different show? No, no. To be fair, to, to, be, fair, to be fair, Imran, I've got to call you out on this, mate. When I was when I was saying two weeks ago. That Usyk had a chance. You were you were joining in with Carl and Ray and laughing at me. I, I've I've never I've never la I've, I was the one that was telling them that Usyk's got a great chance. No, Imran, sorry, I'm sorry. But I, never, <laughs> I, I I've never said. Oh, but when Ray comes back on the show, when Ray comes back on the show, ask Ray about my opinion about this fight. 
that. I never said. I've never said that this is an easy fight for AJ. When did I say that? Anyway, carry on. Go on, Imran. Yeah, so, tell us. So tell us everything. Um, ba basically, I I agree. Carl's saying that you know if Usyk can't keep Usyk can't keep Joshua off of him. When does Joshua walk forward in a fight? And like that range. He doesn't walk right. guys down, especially after being smack, uh, smacked around by Ruiz. He's become even more conservative. His mindset is more defensive. So he Us against Us because he's worried about what what might hit him, irrespective of whether Usyk's a big puncher or not. Joshua's mindset is of one where he doesn't want to get hit. He was, he was boxing at range against Pulev. He was fighting a conservative fight against Pulev. Yet Pulev was no threat. Pulev not never been a big puncher. He's a technical. But right? even oh, oh, and let's say Joshua turns up and he's, and he's a little bit conservative. Then okay, and Usyk still got a problem getting around that jab with the reach difference. What's to stop AJ to keep popping that jab? And, yeah, have, but, and, have, and have a ball fetch for 12 rounds. Yeah, but Joshua's got a lot slower feet than Usyk. Usyk's so much quicker. <laughs> yeah. I, Joshua's... Let, 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 let me put this in a simple way, then. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Bad, 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 time, bad time for bed. I feel, like I'm on the, I feel like I'm on the Canadian show again, where they all... <laughs> so, where's your confidence coming from? From from Usyk's heavyweight performances, that is going to be AJ because they've been absolutely shocking. I take your point that he's a world class cruiserweight, and he is. There's no doubt about it. And I keep I keep seeing these little twi these little um, social media clips where he's showing pictures of his scales. You're talking about his great footwork. Well, why would you start lumping weight on them? Carl, just just to uh, just to cut in there, we've had a comment in the sidebar. From Chris Akabusi's laugh. Uh, <laughs> That's a great put, name. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great name. Um, he's put. Uh, hold on a minute. Just, just before we go there. That you know is a Chris great name. Do you know who Chris Akabusi is? No. Who's that? Chris is Akabusi was it? Was, was it? Yeah. He was. He was Olympic Olympic hurdler, and he had the, the most amazing laugh in the world. Anyway, back to the comment. Uh, so, so the comment is: Usyk did not look. Quick versus a very old Chisora. No, because because Chisora is a pressure fight and he puts it on you. Joshua don't fight like that. Joshua fights at range, so it's a completely different style matchup. It's like basically saying, oh, well, you know, my it's it's like <clears throat> like saying you know my Donna who's a pressure fighter to somebody who, who likes to box. The All right, then let me ask you a simple question, in man. I'll yeah. keep it simple for you. Yeah. Does does that Usyk performance against Delboy beat AJ? No. no. But it's a different style. AJ doesn't I'm, box say, I'm saying that that's all we can make. You only as good as your last performance. Yeah, but styles make you, fun. You can't you can't go off that because but Chisora made him look bad because he walked him he walked him down. That doesn't mean Chisora would fuck Joshua because styles make fights. But I'm yeah, saying, saying is I'm not sure what makes you think you can start coming in and doing the Muhammad Ali shuffle against AJ <laughs> with this great footwork that he's got because he hasn't demonstrated that at every weight. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm not. Has he demonstrated this 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 fleet of foot at every weight division? No. No, I'm not saying that. AJ, I feel AJ is the favourite in the fight. 55, 45, 60, 40. But what you're saying is he's got no chance. <laughs> That's the difference. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I am. You exactly. are. I'll stick to my. I'll stick to my predictions. Like, I know. I, I, I just. I don't think Joshua is not. He's not the. He doesn't. I don't think he's gonna like. You know, like heat seeker, hands up, come forward, and just look to try to to, to try to to try to stop him. He's Joshua's gonna also try to box. That's he's not just gonna straight up try to come forward and 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 look I mean, for the stuff. Cedric, I'm not an AJ fanboy. I'm not Andy will tell you. I'm, no, I'm no. far from it. But I just cannot see any way that Usyk beats AJ. I just can't see it. And if I'm wrong, I'll hold my hands up. I'll do a public apology. <laughs> but I just I just 
you know, I, I, I can't come on one week and say AJ's going to win and do it in run and say the following week. I think I think Usyk's got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I just think AJ. You remember? I, I'm not I'm not comparing him to Bell you here. But do you remember when Bell used to say when he's fighting David A? I ain't going nowhere else in the heavyweight division because they're absolute monsters. Did he or did he not? He actually. Do you remember, do you remember the confrontation they had with um, Wilder? With Wilder. Yeah. When we, they were caught, they were they were stood in front of each other, shouting at each other over a fence, and then half an hour later, they were stood next to each other in uh, in the punditry box. And they had a bit of a hug apparently in between in between the shoots. And afterwards, Bellew said, I could not believe how how long Wilder's arms were. There's absolutely no way I would go anywhere near him. So let's put that in the mix as well. And then when you talk about Olafield, Lewis sorted him out, didn't he? Lennox Lewis, then they fought three times, didn't they? How what was it? One and one win, two losses. Uh, no, it was it was uh, it was two wins and a draw. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's not try and give Evander Holyfield a win here because he didn't. I apologize, so, I wasn't aware of that. Um, so and, and by the way, and by the way, Cedric, the draw should have been a Lewis win. It was scandalous. So, mate, I tell you what, Usyk's got a chance of winning if you bring if you bring three Ukrainian judges over. You might have a chance then. I, I, and, a, and a Ukrainian ref. And it, and let's have it let's have it managed by the Ukrainian boxing boxing federation. I, and maybe let's move to Kiev. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't, in those I don't. In, in in those classic Holyfield Lewis fights, Holyfield was 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 brave enough to stand there in trade. And and let's and, 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 and let's also have it right. Let's let's have a bit of context. Those weren't those weren't one-sided affairs either. They, they, were, were, close, they right? were close fights. But what I'm saying is, Lewis had that why they fought three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but my point is that Lewis had that little bit too much for him. That was that was Lewis. That, that, there's no two ways about it. That was Lewis's size. It was. We, we, we're talking about a phenomenon in, in Oldfield, though, aren't we? Is Usyk as good? Yeah, but Joshua isn't as good as Lewis. No, he isn't. You're right. Well, but we then we'll that, we in the middle of that, that. He's not in the middle of his career. We can't say say compare careers right now. No, he can't. No, he's only two fights in his pro in his heavyweight career. He I said, I, I said a couple of weeks ago, Cedric, that because Carl asked me the same question that he asked. He's just asked Imran. Um, do you think that the Usyk that that, that gave that performance against Jazora beats Joshua? And, and I said, you're going to get a completely different Usyk, a completely yeah. different mindset of, of a fighter going in against a world champion of, mm-hmm. of Joshua's standing compared to a journeyman, without any disrespect to Chisora, a journeyman of Chisora. He's, he's gone into that first fight as well, and I can't remember the, not, the, the guy's name either. Um, he went into that fight, probably not training properly, thinking, I've just destroyed the, the cruiserweight division without breaking sweat. I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna breeze past this first fighter easily, and then his next fights against Chisora. Well, Chisora don't really bring anything. All he does is comes forward and he's a bit clumbersome. I'll get round him, mm-hmm. and by the time he realised, okay, I'm not gonna get round him. It was already halfway through the fight. Yes, and then he's yeah. struggling, isn't he? And he picked some of the comments up in the side, fella. Okay, so so I found with the amazing name. Uh, Chris Akabusi's laugh. He says that he had it. Um, he had a draw as the Holy Field uh, as a Holy Field win. <clears throat> All right. So, so the fight with Lewis that that I think Lewis won. You think Holy Field won? Interesting. Okay. Uh, and he's also put Usyk is thirty four. His career at cruiserweight was not even. Not even yeah, to yeah. the level of Holyfield, which it wasn't. Uh, and at Cruiserweight, uh, well, forgot it. U- Usek forget it. could fight no. till he's 66 and won't come close to Holyfield. Okay, now, quick question. If he, if he just hypothetically, if he beats 
Joshua Fury and Wilder would that change with that with that opinion change what do you yes think? in a word yes and, and that's, you, why, Carl, and that's asking, why I say that's why I say asking, when you know we have to the end of the career to compare he's asking Chris Akabusi he's not asking you I thought he's asking me, sir. Let, for, for, for a minute, and I thought I was a presenter on the show. Sorry. Let, <laughs> let, let Chris Sakabusi answer. So why, why Chris, why Chris puts his answer? It was Chaz Weatherspoon that he fought first. Yes, yes, yes. Chaz um. Weatherspoon. So the legend that is, and then he fought the legend, which is Chisora, and now he's in with AJ. So that's some jump. He says it's a crazy, it's a crazy. Um, he's got, he's, he's got balls. Six, six, I'll, I'll give it to nice. one. He says, he says, if he beats, if he, if he beats uh, those three, uh, it, it'd be six hundred to one. Okay, well that's that's the path that he's on because there's no other way he's not going to go up to heavyweight. And if he wins, Joshua go back down. So yeah, I've been, we'll that, I've, I've been that path will be shut off very early though, Cedric. Okay, very early. We'll see. September twenty fifth of this. September twenty fifth. Out of interest, out of interest, Chris, uh, would you like to come on the screen? It'd be nice but to no, see you, mate. But no laughing. No, I, 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 I want to see if you can do it, Chris. I can use your laugh. So, Cedric, why Chris makes his mind up whether he's coming on there? We may as well finish off the overweights with Tyson Fury versus Wilder. So, obviously, there's been a lot of to and in throwing. Where's. I, I don't know if I dare ask you, Cedric, but um, <laughs> um, how do you see that fight going? Yes, of course, Tyson Fury is the favourite to win. I can feel a book coming on. <laughs> all i'm saying is what, what time is it over there are, are you even on the bed <laughs> all i'm saying is we we have to be aware of, of of a dangerous puncher like you just have to be aware of that correct like i, I i'm just i don't think it's i don't think it's right for everyone just to think tyson fury it's just going to be a regular cakewalk for tyson fury and he's just going to like he's not like he has absolutely nothing to worry about. That right hand is very dangerous. Yes, that's all he has, but that 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 thing that's all he has is a very big if. Like when people say if if someone could land their right hand, Wilder's if is a very big if. And so that's that's all I'm saying. Me personally, yes, I'm big. Yes, Fury. The, the, the only point I would make there, Mister Ben, would be that he landed that in the first show. The first show, the first fight, mm. and it and it didn't put Tyson out, did it? It did not. It did not. Um, in fact, he come back to win the fight and the fight. A lot of it. I need more alcohol. He did. He, he did come back to uh, surprisingly come back. Woke, rose to the rose the life back up like the Undertaker to uh, take over that round. Um, so I guess how many how many of those can if if Lider, Wilder can land more than one of those? <laughs> Anyways, I'm picking Fury. Yes, I'm picking Fury. But all I'm saying, please be careful of that right hand. That's all. Hey, That's hey all. gentlemen, do you, do you think that Fury has taken um, Wilder's soul already? So whatever Wilder's going to bring in September, it's not going to matter. True or false? True. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, little Penny. You wish I'd sit on the fence a little bit more, um, but but no, it's true. Yeah, even even he showed that on the press conference, like where he didn't say anything. Uh, I know he was probably trying not to get uh, into uh, like in, like because Fury plays a lot of mind games, but in yeah. the in the first fight he was playing those because he had a lot of confidence. But now I, I think that. While this confidence is totally gone, he he can't box. Fury is probably the best boxer in our gen in our generation. In fact, yeah. like pr probably like he, he he him and Ali. Look, I know this is probably gonna sound crazy, but no, I think not him, a one. He, not him a Fury, a Fury and Fury and Ali to me are the best boxers I've seen uh, in, in in the heavyweight division. It's a big statement that is. Wow, and, and also the way he moves his body as well. I've never seen a heavyweight that big 
that can move his body like that. I just ha haven't seen it before. Can, can you just repeat that statement, please? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does it sound outrageous, does it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, over I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. Fury is by far the, the most talented fighter in the current yeah, well. generation of boxers. But he cannot lace Muhammad Ali's boots. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I, said, I, I, just, I said that his boxing ability is kind of like the same. No. Where, where he moves, he can he moves his body and his and uh, the way he evades uh, evades uh, punches. Look, I mean, li little Penny, I, I'm a, I, I'm a bigger Fury fan as he come, but I'm starting to wonder if if you're the New Zealand's Tyson Fury fan club chairman. <laughs> that is a ma I mean, I might record that and send it to him because you know what what an accolade that is to even be putting the same sentence as Muhammad Ali. But if he if he beats if he cleans out the, the division, he he would be he, like a, a Vladimir Klitschko. Like I know he cleaned out the division, but he the opponents that he fought they weren't that good. Like whereas here with Fury, at you least Wilder and Oh, he's he's little penny, you're killing me here. You're, you're killing me here, little penny. Have you had <laughs> corn have you <laughs> corn flakes this morning? Go and get go and put some more sugar on them cornflakes. Little penny, <laughs> I, I, I've got to say, mate, we're in one of the poorest heavyweight division eras. Oh. He's been Wilder has <laughs> Wilder has a one punch, a one punch chance of winning a fight. He's fought nobody apart from Tyson Fury. In, in 45 fights or 50 fights, however many fights he's had, he's fought one decent opponent and lost twice. But don't you think the heavyweight division has um, uh, has made a comeback in a way uh, after that Klitschko, like the Klitschko brothers, where they made it boring? No, I think it's poor, mate. Not to, not to the level of uh, in the 70s with yeah. Ali, no. Or, oh, or yeah, the yeah, nineties, yeah, yeah. or the nineties. Let, let's have yeah, it. All the nineties with with Lewis Holyfield, Bo, uh, and oh, you, there's probably another ten that I could mention. Yeah, we we definitely can't compare that that nine that generation to to this generation yeah. as far as the level of competition of all the big guys fighting each other. Um, but don't you, just, mate, don't you, uh, don't you agree that the the heavyweight division has made a resurgence? Like, what's oh, all, yes. like what? We're yes, talking about yeah. the heavyweight division just now. not to that level, yeah, yeah. though, little penny. Just not to the yeah, level. Yeah. Of you're right, there. little penny. You're right that it's better than the Klitschko ten years because they fought nobody in ten years. Really, it's better than that era, but it's not anywhere near. It's not even anywhere then near the nineties era. So it's it's certainly not anywhere near the seventies era. Yeah. Um, and little penny, yeah, I'm right, right, little, little penny, am I right in thinking that you're a massive Pacquiao fan? Yes, I am. I'm half Filipino, yeah. in fact. Yeah, I thought you were, fella. So let let while we're talking about fights where people have got no chance of winning, let's go on to another <laughs> one. <laughs> let, let's go on to another one because L Spence, I'm sorry to I, I'm a big Pacquiao fan, legend of the sport, goes without saying, numerous weight wheel champion. But unfortunately, I think he's in deep, deep water. With his age, it doesn't help him. I just think Spence is going to be proved to be that special fighter in amongst all them lot. So I think I think I think he's in deep water. I think I think this could well be the end of the road for Mr. Pacquiao. What do you think? Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I think he's in deep water. But the thing is, Pacquiao has been in deep waters. Um, uh, before and he's he's come out he's come out out of it and also I like just like to make a point Errol Spence is not the fastest guy in the world and also when he throws his those uppercuts when he's uh, when he's in inside he, he he sits down on them what he's got he's, though, not, he's big oh, though okay. the way little penny what Errol Spence has that beats speed is timing yep he has he has impeccable timing and. It'll, it'll be studying Pacquiao's movements. It'll be studying Pacquiao's, Pacquiao's attack style. And he'll time him. He'll knock him out, unfortunately. I, I, I hate to say it because I'm a huge Pacquiao fan. I have nothing but respect. But he's, he's going in against the wrong person in this division. He, he's too small for the division anyway. 
and he's going in against a monster of the division who has who yeah, has unbelievable are, boxing skills. Yeah, and they're actually um I'm picking Spence to win. Hmm. But I wouldn't be surprised if Pacquiao wins also because I, I think this I don't know if you guys have heard Freddie Roach had a um had an interview with uh, Brian Brian Cam Brian Campbell uh, on Mortal Kombat, and he he was saying that uh, Spence's foot speed uh, and his uh, uh, the way he punches Pacquiao can take advantage of that. I think he may be referring to the Koto version of Pacquiao, yeah. where he was fast. But uh, when he when I I don't you guys saw that Thurman fight, he he still had it. But he just couldn't maintain it for 12 rounds. Of course he can't because of his age. We don't really know what we're getting, though, little Penny, do we? He's been out of the ring for how long? Is it two years? Yeah, but Freddie Roach also said that that two years helped him. Kind of like how well, Donair... He's hardly, he's hardly going to come out and say that it hasn't helped him, is that? <laughs> yeah, but you know, Nonito, Nonito Donair also had a nearly a two-year break. And when he knocked out... Oh, I can't remember his yeah, name. What, the what, WBC I'm champion. thinking about... I'm thinking about the age difference here, though. Yeah, yeah, that's think, true. That's true. I don't think two years out of the ring helps. Is he 42? 40, 41? Mm. Yes, 42, 43 in December. Yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, he, he did look good in his last performance, but it definitely was two years ago. Um, so uh, um, uh, I guess, you know, we always, Carl, you said before, you're only as good as your last performance. His last performance was was pretty good. But again, it was two years ago, so it, that's, yeah. That's... What, what what I'd argue there, Cedric, is as you, as you're alluding to, um, there's certain contributing factors there with that comment in that two years out the ring, 42, you know, a lot of miles on the clock. So I just wonder what Pacquiao's going to look like. He, be, he better be in good shape, and he better be sharp. He's going to need to be. But but um, but mate, he's always in good shape. Like he's never been. The only time that he was in bad shape was was against Jeff Horn. Apart from that, all of his other fights, he was always in good shape. Sometimes, though, little penny, these boxers get into the ring in the twilight years, and he's just not there anymore. I yeah. use the example De Gale against Eubank Junior. Just wasn't there anymore. Ricky Atten fought that Russian dude, and the name name escapes me, and he just wasn't there anymore. You know, they, sometimes you have that one fight too many where. You just realize it's gone. And that's hey, one of your, hey, mate, one of your commentators, what, sorry, one of your, one of your um, followers is saying that Manny versus Spence, keep an eye out for me. I will be parachuting in the seventh round. <laughs> 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 that Why is that, Chris? Have you got a seventh round stoppage at the bookies or something? <laughs> hey, that will help Pacquiao. Actually, that's a great that's a great idea, Chris, because Pacquiao will probably run out of energy at that time. So a 30 a 30 minute break would definitely help him. Yes, definitely do it. <laughs> and we'll use the word allegedly, Chris, because I don't want to be coming to court because it's on this channel to defend you. So we'll use the word allegedly. Oh, you know, if this happens, this is going to be absolute gold. <laughs> someone needs to do a, a document. Someone needs to do a documentary on that that parachute fight. Oh, no, oh, didn't did, did ESPN do a documentary about that Bo Holyfield parachuting thing? Really? Did they? Did they? Yeah. Like, uh, wait, because did they said that a uh, Holyfield's uh, or maybe Bo's wife had a heart attack or something, and she had to go to the hospital wow. um, uh, uh, after that parachute. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I thought ESPN did uh, a documentary about oh, that. I've not thing. seen that. I'm gonna have to try and find it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your mate's gone. Yeah, he dropped. Uh, yeah, sometimes I have some IT issues. Yeah. yeah. Hey, mate, oh, Carl, also, um, Imran also made a comment about um, if Pacquiao uh, wins this fight, he thinks that. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to repeat because he's uh, your friend. Yeah, back. I mean, I mean, what I would say is I don't often listen to what anything Imran says anyway, little penny. So, no, go on, little penny, make your point. Ignore what so ignore Imran. What Carl if Imran said that if Pacquiao wins against Pence, this fight is probably the, be the best uh, victory of someone of that age in boxing history. Do I'm you agree? I, actually, I do agree with that, actually, yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you guys agree with that? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, 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 Spence yeah. is in his prime. 
But what about all those Bernardo? What about Foreman? Um, what about when Foreman come back and won a heavyweight belt in that up oh, there? He wasn't fighting anybody there, was he? I could have I could have gone gone in there and, and gave a better performance. It was it Michael Moore. Michael Moore. It, it, I mean, Michael, Michael Moore got paid off for that date, mate. He's, he's got he's got another eight years on back out though, hasn't he? Yeah, but Imran saying, was saying that. Imran I'm just was saying that. Advocate. But mate, Imran was saying that um, uh, Michael Mora wasn't in the top five pound for found list at the time. Michael Mora was. In in no, he wasn't. Ma Michael War Michael Mora wasn't in the top fifty fighters at the time, was he? <laughs> yeah, that's what Imran's saying. Michael Mora was a poor, poor heavyweight. He did beat Holyfield though for the lineal heavyweight title. Uh, well, Ellifield must have been fighting with, with one eye tied behind his back and blind. <laughs> I mean, it's all it's all immaterial anyway because I, I don't think it'll happen. So it's not an argument we have to have, to be honest. I, you know, I think Pacquiao can pull it off, Carl. I, I really do. I think he can pull it off because Spence is not the. I think if 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 Pacquiao fought Crawford, yeah, okay, because Crawford is so fast and he, he he's. He kind of like he's got a lot of he's got a plan B and C. Whereas Errol Spence, he only has a plan A, but that plan A no, is I'm very not sure good. about that. I'm not sure about that. I think Errol Spence quite, is quite adaptable in the ring. He's clever. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the Mikey Garcia fight is a bit. Uh, I know what you're saying. I know. I know. And I know where it's, that's coming from. Uh, but uh, uh, look, see, Mikey Garcia was probably just collecting a paycheck at that time. And he didn't really push the push his limit. Whereas Pacquiao, he, he will empty the tank. He like pa Pacquiao in his think, cut from different cloth. Little little Penny, I don't think Errol Spence gets the credit he deserves from when he went over to Sheffield in England to beat Kel Brook in his own backyard. Yeah, but Kel Brook was already broken at that time. No, okay. no, no. I, I disagree. I disagree. I think Brook was still alive and dangerous fighter at that stage. Yeah, you know, you know, Kel Brook was winning that fight. If you look at the scorecards, I think he was leading that. But the thing is, his eye, his eye socket, the, his other eye socket got, I think, Wait, broken because the, Triple G the, broke the, the 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 fight before. Little Penny, we were there that night, um, me and Carl. Okay. And and it wasn't. He wasn't winning the fight, <laughs> he, he wasn't winning the fight mate. He, I was about to say. Was okay. No, no he, he wasn't winning the fight. He, he, he won the first two. For maybe three rounds, but it was very it was very apparent to anybody that wasn't from Sheffield um, that he was he was getting picked off convincingly. He was. Er Errol Spence was 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 warming into the fight, and he would have stopped he would have stopped Kel Brook anyway without the eye injury. Okay. There were definitely um, different levels here, weren't there? And, uh, yeah, clearly. yeah, yeah. Cl clearly different levels. I mean, going into the fight. I'm sure Carl won't mind me saying it. We both thought Brooke was going to win the fight. You know, we, we couldn't see we, we, this kid from was he Texas into Errol Spence with this kid from Texas that, you know, he's just coming over to, to, to collect a paycheck. We, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't think he was the fighter. He, he was, he turned out to be brilliant, brilliant performance, you know, to come over to, to come over to England and, and do what he did. Outstanding. And yeah, what you need to realise, little Penny, is Bramall Lane, where he was fighting at, is, is Kel Brook's home soccer stadium. So to have the balls to go into is you know to go into that guy's backyard, literally the lines, like the lines, Dan. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I get because uh, Tim Bradley did that too. So I, um, uh, I, I kind of understand. Uh, uh how significant that victory is for errol spence but the thing is uh, uh, gee, i hate to say this because i'm actually i actually think that spence will um will, will win and pacquiao probably chose it on the back of his mind he chose spence because he probably wants to pass the torch to someone who reflects like him like a true warrior you know he wouldn't want to pass it on to someone who's 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 not a warrior like him? Yeah, like bro. But at the same, like yeah. But at the same time, I, I think I think he's got a big chance to win this. Um, 
Uh, I like that. Uh, it's probably because of emotion, but the closer the fight gets, I, I, I'm my, my the pendulum might swing. Who knows? Come on, come on, little pain. Let's not have any splinters sit on the fence. Who wins and what round then? I think Spence will win. I think he wins by decision. I, I think uh, Manny might do um, like what 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 he did to Floyd, where you know he might back off a little bit. But I don't think he he win he loses on his stool like everyone is saying. I think if if he figures out that Spence's punch is too strong and his and his punch resistance at age forty two is no longer that good, I, I think he'll just back off. Yeah. And uh, and and lose by unanimous decision. And I love Cedric now. I've just, I've just seen Cedric lift a suspicious silver tin up to his mouth. So I think that might explain why he didn't <laughs> give him the answers he has tonight. But here we go again. Cedric, um, Pacquiao versus Spence, and talk to me. Um, I don't usually predict stoppages, but I believe Spence will, will stop Manny in the 10th round. And is that just too big? Uh, yes, but Spence has, he's one of the rare boxers that has the boxing skills, but also is willing to stand there and trade with you. He's yeah. done that with plenty, with Sean Porter. He's done that, you know, he dropped Sean Porter late in fights too. So he has, his, parry, his power carries late in fights. Um, um, Danny Garcia, he just boxed the crap out of Danny Garcia with his jab. With, and then he, again, with other fighters, he's shown that he that he's willing to stand there and trade. Uh, with he, him, he, so. he, tra he traded with Cal Brook, didn't he? Yes, that's how he was able to break his eye socket, you know. So, and what about you, Amanda? Oh, uh, just a no brainer, mate. Spence, Spence times Pacquiao coming in, and I think he stops him mid to late rounds. I, I can't remember exactly what I predicted last time, I think it was in between seven and nine, anyway, somewhere around there. But it wouldn't surprise me if he stopped him very early because he'll time him coming in. Yeah, I'm going I think I went seven. I think I think I went it was, seven. It was, it was somewhere somewhere around there that, that I said as well. But I, I can I can imagine because of the way Manny fights offensively, he he throws combinations on the move and not just like inches, like feet. He throws combinations almost running forward at times. Yeah. And uh, and Spence will time that. Because he, yeah. he's not, he's, he's that, he's that good a fighter. He will time that, and he'll, he'll yeah. catch Manny coming in. And Manny, he's not the type of fighter to move around and and you know no. throw jabs and try to slip and and try to make you miss. He he's trying to make you miss so he can come back with a combination of power and punches. And he's, he, yeah. he's he's quite a, he's quite a straightforward fighter as well. He's not a lot of side movement with Pacquiao. His, his combinations and his his offensive. Attacks come come forward. Um, Andy, Andy, are you predicting that that Errol Spence will do a one Manuel Marquez on Pacquiao? Yeah, potentially. Wow, but you know I, that was that was in twenty thirteen at, uh, at the height of Pacquiao's at the height of Pacquiao's ability. Exactly. Yeah, and th that was eight years ago. A lot of boxers have tried to do that same tactic. A lot of boxers uh, haven't got the. And no got one's the ever done it. Yeah, I know, but a lot of boxers don't have, Errol Spence. A lot of boxers don't have the timing ability that Errol Spence has. It's a rare commodity in boxing that, that someone can time can time a shot properly. Errol Spence has that ability, which makes me think that's why he can do what I think he can do. I, I do think it goes a bit longer than that, if I'm honest. I, I think, like I said, between seven and nine, but um it wouldn't surprise me if he stops Pacquiao really early i really think this is manny going out on his sword out i think he's chosen the most the toughest fight in the division where he's almost going to use it as a measuring stick to whether he's got anything left so i think this will determine whether he's going to whether he's going to have another fight or whether this is good night vienna i've had my career thanks for coming you know freddie roach also said i don't know if this is true and all whether it was just kidding around but uh, next year, there's an election in the Philippines. He's either got, he's probably got my my relatives in the Philippines think that Manny will run for the vice presidency, not the presidency. Right. But he, uh, Fred Roach thinks that Manny would want to fight as a, as as someone who's a vice president rather than a senator. So I don't think yeah. this is his last fight. Maybe he's second <clears> last. 
Um, but yeah, that, that's what Freddie Roach said. But I don't know if he was joking around though. He might not have a choice whether it's his last fight or not. Should it go badly wrong? So, so Chris Akabusi in the comments has he's put a few things here. Uh, he's put. Imagine if if he pulls it off. I'm assuming. I'm assuming he's meaning Pacquiao. Uh, Spence plants his feet a lot. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was saying. When he when he punches, right, he really sits down on his punches. So Manny will have a split second to 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 beat that and then get out of the way. The yeah, question the pro, is, can he panic. maintain it for twelve rounds? But 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 in boxing, timing beats speed anyway. Which is what I'm talking about this time, and I'm I'm talking about if 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 Errol Spence times in the way I think he can, it wouldn't it won't matter how quick Pacquiao is. And I yeah, think yeah, Manny, I, I agree. I, I think Manny, I, I think Manny's getting caught more and more by shots anyway, and that's because his reaction, you know, his reaction time gets a little that little bit slower and slower. So Chris is Chris Akabusi is also put. You know, it'd be great if this really was Chris, Chris Akabusi, wouldn't it? Chris Akabusi is, um, is, is also put. Uh, Spence face worries me as Manny will pull put it on him. Spence, uh, put it on Spence, the the most more, more than, than Danny. Danny did. So he's talking about Danny Garcia yeah, there. I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Manny's training I here is focusing on a TKO win. Oh, but yeah, if, if that's true, it's poor tactics. Yeah. You know, you know what, guys, sometimes when I see Manny training, I'm a bit worried that he lets all of those cameras in all the time, like a full access. Like, I'm a bit worried that he's not sometimes, and Freddie Roach have said this too in the past, sometimes he trains for the cameras rather than for the fight. Yeah. Because I've noticed that when every, every single day, there's always a footage of Manny training. And I'm a bit worried about that, that, you know, sometimes Freddie needs to close the door. And, it's all uh, staged anyway, isn't it? All that will be staged. Right, Cedric? It'll be staged, won't it? I mean, uh, you know, every camp's different. Some some fighters do get affected by the by the cameras. Some fighters, you know, the, it, at, at the same time, it helps. It helps. You know, you want to attract more more people to the fight to the you know to the but thing. Said, so. It's like <clears throat> sorry, Cedric. It's like when they do the open workouts before a fight. You know, it's mm. all staged to give away as little as possible. Oh, I'm going to just jab the bag for a bit. Yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not, not that, that it's necessarily staged, but you're just doing general stuff. Like you're not doing yeah. like specific. No things, that you know, you're doing a fight. Yeah, you're just doing general shadow boxing, general yeah. hitting the bag, skipping your work. You know, just just to get yeah. videos and cameras. But having it every day, you know, that's that's uh, that's a little bit excessive. Yeah, yeah. That's what right. I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> Little Penny is it's twenty past one in the morning in the UK, so I oh, think okay. we're gonna bring, I think we're gonna bring this to an end, fella. Okay, thanks, man. Thank <clears throat> you for letting us in. No, I really enjoyed having you on, fella. You're more than welcome to so, come back anytime you like. I'm guessing that um, the nine o'clock show we do on a Thursday is a little bit too early for you. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, but I, I do watch it. Too. So, do so watch what? It. What we plan? What we? What we planning to do a bit more often? Just so you know. Is every time there's a card in the UK um, that finishes, generally it finishes about eleven thirty. Uh, we we're going to start jumping on and doing one of these post post fight shows um, a bit more regular. So for the next, I don't know how many weeks. Four weeks. For the next four weeks, we've we've got we've got cards in the UK. The uh, zone and, and match room have got the the fight the fight camp cards for the next three weeks. Is that the one with Katie Taylor fighting? Yeah, she's she's on um, week three. Yeah, week three. Um, we've got we've got uh, Lee Wood, who's who's from our from our part of the world, Nottingham. He's got a world title fight against Zhu Kan on this first card. Also, Connor Connor Ben fights on this first card. Um, oh, that's a is, good test for Connor Ben, right? Is, is yeah, yeah. Fighting, um, Oh, what is that? It, it's a good test, right? It is. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. Well, it's Lee Wood, Lee Wood fights at seven p.m. Little Penny our time next week, so me and Andy might be a bit drunk if he does. <laughs> we yeah, we might be celebrating. We might, we, we might be coming on the show slurring the words a little bit, um, because because Lee Wood, Lee Wood's a, a friend of the show. He, he, he comes on, he, he gives us his time, 
Um, and he's just just to let everybody know as well. Uh, and Lee was a little bit shy about saying this, but Lee Wood does so much in the community in 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 our area. He's always in gyms. He's always in with the little kids. I've had, uh, and I know this firsthand because I've got a friend that has an eleven year old that trains at one of the local gyms. And Lee Wood goes in regular. He'll take the pads. He'll he'll take these kids in the ring. He'll do work with them. He'll sit. He'll spend time, sit down and chat. Um, it does it does it consistently on on a regular on a regular basis. So. So this, you know, we, we, me, me, myself and Carl and... and well, Andy, and give, us the, give us the edited version, lad. The last, spell boxing, the last spell boxing team, uh, we, we're really rooting for Philly to, to pull this off. He's a top lad. So okay. basically, uh, he's from Nottingham. He comes on the show, so we want him to win. You have to build it, Carl. And then Little Penny also, we've got, uh, we've got some massive interviews dropping as well next week. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some really big interviews dropping, and that's it. I, that's I really, really, I, you know, guys, I really enjoyed the interview with Natasha Jonas. I really like that. Uh, I, I, and I wish they could have a rematch with Katie Taylor because that was a very, very close fight. Yeah, in fact, well, Katie, Taylor, was. Katie you know, Taylor only won that fight in the last two rounds. Do, do, do you know what, very mate? Very humble. Very humble. Yeah, do, do you know what, mate? Just before we go, and I, I know Carl's Carl's wanting to get off and get himself some kit, but um. Uh, before before we go, Carl's just mentioned it there. Natasha was amazing when she came on the show. Well, it's not, well Andy, it's all the guests, all, yeah, all the guests have been great, aren't they, Andy? Yeah, yeah. In, well, we've, we've had no. This is, I think, this is the boxing community. You know, uh, little penny. They, they're all humble because they all come from a difficult background, one way or another. You know, they, they all started off with nothing, and they've all come up and made the way in boxing. And I think they appreciate that. The fans, and that's kind of what this show is meant to be about, really. Yeah, you, you know. Like, sorry, just Andy. So, Andy, before you finish, you know, I watched that um, that semi final um, semi final match in two thousand eight between Jonas and Katie Taylor. Oh my god, that is the best. The even um, even the yeah. princess of um, uh, Kate, Kate Middleton, even she was there yeah. to, to watch that fight. And I thought that was um, that was a, a really good atmosphere. Oh, sorry, it's, not not two thousand eight, two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve in in the in the UK, yeah. Well, I'll yeah, tell you what, little Penner, if I get when we get Jonas on next, if the time zone works, you can jump on with us. How about that to interview her, interview her? Yeah, and she's a really good commentator too. I remember she commentated she one of the few the zone cards. She was really good. She she's got media. She's got her media qualifications. So. Yeah, and and her face also is very um is the camera likes her like in terms of when she puts makeup on it's re it's it's really like i thought she was a professional um commentator she's really good isn't she yeah yeah and just to name it just to give another person a shout out as well roberto diaz what a nice guy he was you yes, know from golden boy another, right yeah yeah another great guest yeah another i mean like i said they've all been brilliant um you know they've, they've all given us time and come on and, and talked honestly and candidly so yeah it's, it's been a great six months man you gotta get eddie hearn you gotta get the big book the big guy eddie hearn well if you can get me his contact details um because it's proven, <laughs> i'm sure you're well connected with him little penny you know uh, <laughs> Because you, you got your personality would fit with his personality too. I think it'll be a great interview. I'd love to. I'd love to mix it with Mister Earn. I'm sure we'd have a, a good exchange. I think he would do it because Eddie Hearn is quite. You know, he's not. You know, he's not like Bob Arum or anything. He, he would. I think he would be happy to do it. If we yeah, could get close what, enough to ask him, then maybe maybe he would. Watch his space. That's all we'll say. Watch his space. So, yeah. Little Penny, it's been a pleasure. Um, thanks, mate. See you guys. Thanks, Little Penny. Care, mate. Um, also, thanks to Chris in the sidebar. Chris, uh, I absolutely love your name, mate. I don't know how you've come up with that, but it's fantastic. Um, but thanks a lot for your for your input. Uh, you've added loads to the show, mate. So hopefully you'll come on uh, and speak to us on a Thursday night, 9 p.m. We do a live show. Um, generally focusing on the card from the previous weekend or the upcoming card for the next weekend. If you haven't subscribed, give it a subscribe. Just, just okay. out of interest, out of interest, Chris. Before we go, whereabouts are you from, mate? 
Yeah, don't put you just put the city fella. We don't want any other details. <laughs> Have a guess, Andy, why he's typing. Where do you reckon? I think he's Oh, he's gonna come on. Let him jump on five minutes. Or does he mean he'll come on in the future? Oh, I don't know. My bet my bet is England. Oh, it's gonna be England, isn't it, little penna? Come on. <laughs> what town in England? Oh, town or I don't know. London. <laughs> uh, you've gone a bit safe there, haven't you? I'm gonna go. Where's Chris Akabusi from? I'm gonna go somewhere in Yorkshire. No, Chris Akabusi is from London, isn't it? Is that? I'm still gonna go Yorkshire. I don't understand those shires, guys. I, I like. I still. I'm shires. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What are they like? Are they a state or what? What are they? Are you, uh, what are you talk? You talk about Yorkshire and Lancashire and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so in 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 the UK. Oh um, no! When did this become a geography channel? <laughs> <laughs> So it's so in the, in the UK there's the the shires it's like districts I suppose. Oh, okay. So, so we're from Nottingham, but there's Nottingham Shire, and within that there's other areas like Mansfield and Newark. Oh my day, Andy, you're killing this! I'm just clearing it up. The guy's from New Zealand. <laughs> so does, does that make it any clearer? No. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't, little fella. Stop being polite. <laughs> Is Chris going to come on? I don't know. I don't know if you meant next time. Oh, okay. Have you got the link, Chris, if you're coming on? If not, Carl will put it in again. Yeah, it's not on the recent ones. Maybe you should put it on. Drop it back in again, Carl, just in case he's going to jump yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, just bear with me. There we go. There you go, Chris. Uh, just put that in, mate, and then Carl will let you in. It's quite. Uh, he's still there, little penny. Yes. It's quite interesting because um, this um, this fight that Lee Woods got. Uh, from from Nottingham Lee Wood that we're talking about, he's got this world title shot, uh, WBA uh, featherweight world title shot the weekend. He's fighting a guy called Zhu Kan from China, but Zhu Kan is um, is promoted by Golden Boy, and we've obviously got a little bit of a a, a relationship, stroke friendship going on with Roberto Diaz, who who, who match makes for Golden Boy, so. It's interesting we've had we've had both of these these guys on the show as well. Yeah. Interesting. So is that Chris, on the, that's on the zone, right? It's yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Did you see did you see last year's um did you see last year's uh, fight camp? Uh yeah, I I really uh, I watched the one with um uh with uh, uh Shannon Courtney Shannon and, Courtney against Ebony Bridges. Yeah, yeah, that that fight camp. I really like that, and I also watched the epilogue as well. Um, is is he going to come on? Oh no, no, oh, sorry. Under, under. <laughs> <Talking> <laughs> <and Arnold. laughs> is it? Is this? Is, hey, Carl, is this where? Is this where? Um, what's his name? Uh, the the famous um Robert Roman Hood is from. Yeah, that's right. That's the one. Okay. Come on, come on, Andy. It's a geography lesson. Come on. I can't even see the screen, mate. So stop being a daft lad. I, I can see it. It's it's the map of Sheffield. Oh, oh, sorry, no, no, Nottingham. Sorry, Nottingham. Yeah, I just thought Andy might break it down for you. I'm already, I'm already break it down. <laughs> I did. I didn't need a screen to tell him. Well, what? What? I think you do because that explanation was shite. So I thought <laughs> I'd give a bit, a bit, a bit of visual. Hey Nottingham, guys, when I was... Nottingham hey, City, hey. Nottingham Shire's an area. Yeah, I'll put I'll put the I'll put the map the cursor. Don't worry, Andy. I edit this out at the end. Don't worry. Yeah, hey, mate. When I mate, when I was growing up in the nineties, um, obviously Liverpool was very popular, but Nottingham Forest was popular too. Whatever happened to Nottingham Forest? No. <laughs> you know what, Carl's Carl's asked you to say that, Andy. No, 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 no. It's, it just so maybe, happens. Maybe I'll, just, just so maybe you know, I'll rotate this out. Just so you know, little panic. It just so happens Carl's a Liverpool fan. 
Me and too, I'm, me too. And I'm a Forest fan. Oh, Bill okay. Benny, you a Liverpool fan? Yeah, I used to watch Barnes and um, uh, oh. Barnes. Uh, what was that? Um, the the goalkeeper who who who, who, who was Bruce Grobola. Yeah, Grobola and Ian Rush. Um, yeah, they had a good yeah. side, didn't they, Liverpool? Rush. And also, I loved it when um, Harry Kuehl, uh played for Liverpool. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you've got but, the Oceania bit going on there, haven't you? The o guys, yeah. guys, you're making me feel sick. Stop it. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> come on, come on now, and uh, talk through this map. Come on, little penny's looking. It's Sunday morning. It Sunday education, and uh, Sunday education. What? Sheffield, Sheffield is not far from Nottingham. Okay, so okay, yeah. little penny, right? Okay, so you look very very interesting little pennies now. Nah. Right, look, so Nottingham, you can see Nottingham as a, as, a, as a city, yeah? Yes. Right, so the, there's areas around there. Nottingham. So Mansfield, which is above Nottingham, that's in Nottinghamshire. Oh, so you see the little area there? there so you see the area that's light, lighter green than the other areas around? Yes. That's Nottinghamshire. So ah. within that, you've got Mansfield, you've got Worksop, you've got Retford yep. and Newark. So that, that, that gives you an idea of, of what the shire is. It's pretty big. Yeah, yeah, and and there's there's obviously others that are bigger. So, so Yorkshire covers like Leeds and Hull, and and then Lancashire, which covers Manchester, uh, Wigan, all all that kind of area. Um, so yeah, these they're all over the they're all over the country, and it's like I suppose they're like districts in in. Who in says places, last spell? Areas. Who said last spell can't be educational? I know, <laughs> and that's and that's after I've had offer. Oh, off a litre of Jack Daniels. So, li Little Penny, where are you from? Let's have a look where you're from. I'm in Auckland, mate. Auckland. That's pretty far from you guys. It's like 24 hours to get to London. Yeah, Auckland. I'm in Auckland, in the city of Auckland. I'm in, a, um, I'm in an apartment. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need to know no, what the I'm, building is, fella. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not in any town. I'm actually in Auckland, Auckland. You yeah, now they told me New Zealand's be beautiful and it is a country. Yes, it is. It is. It's where um the, yeah. the Lord of the Rings was um filmed. All, all all four all four movies. And uh, right. and uh, Russell Crowe is from New Zealand too, not from Australia. People think he's from Australia, but he's actually from New Zealand. I thought he was from Australia, actually. To be fair, no, no, he was born in New Zealand. He he just he he just went to Australia because the the move there are better movies uh, out in Australia, obviously. Oh, okay. Don't you don't you own a rugby league club somewhere in Australia? Sorry. Does he own a rugby league club in Australia? Don't he, Russell Crowe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rabbitohs, South Sydney Rabbitohs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. Yeah, yeah. Right, just wait there a minute, little penny. I'm just going to bring the show to an end because we've done the geography bit now. So let me send the stream, but don't go anywhere, and we'll, and we'll finish off our geography lesson. <laughs> what, happened, what, happened to your, what happened to our man Chris Akabusi? I wanted to know which which town he came from. <laughs> uh, we, we might yeah. find that out on Thursday. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, um, it's, it's clear you're not jumping on tonight, fellas. So we're going to bring the show to an end, um, and we'll catch up with you Thursday. Thanks for thanks for your comments, though, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank, yeah. Thanks, guys.